Hello, this is going to be a brief overview of what is required to proctor a forward exam for the school year 2017. Let's take a look at the PowerPoint. Uh, you should have a copy of this available and uh, we're going to continue to move on. So here's an overview of what we're going to be discussing briefly. Uh, keep in mind that the forward exam is a summative assessment at the end of the school year. This is year two. We expect it to continue for several years. The test window for this year is March 20th through April 28th. You can see the exams and the grades that are appropriate for this. Uh, also keep in mind that Madison Metropolitan Schools does have spring break in between. Here is a graphic overview of what the exam itself looks like. You'll notice that there are uh, there's one change this year. Instead of three sessions, there are now four sessions for English language arts. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about the text-dependent analysis writing. That's just been pulled out of the writing language uh, assessment uh, session and made its own separate session. It's nothing new. We've done it before. The test times, as you can see, are in this, uh, this table. This has not changed since last year. Your role and responsibility, as you can see that there are several different levels of uh, responsibility within this test. We're going to focus on the test administrator or proctor. Here is what you're responsible for. Uh, completing this training and the test security training, you should have a test administrator's administration manual, the TAM. You'll get student tickets. You'll monitor the students during testing. Um, there is a to-do checklist on the MMSD website and we will be uh, making sure that that is up to date um, as we move forward. So the question is who's responsible for security? The answer is everyone is. However, let's focus on what is required for teachers, test administrators, proctors, certified and non-certified public school staff. The purpose of security is to ensure that um, at all times that the integrity of the assessment is protected. Um, that requires us to do several things before, during, and after the test. You can see a list here. Uh, very briefly, don't discuss any of the, the assessment items that you've seen. Uh, do not let any unauthorized adults or staff to be present during the exam. This includes parent volunteers. Make sure that you understand that the, the test tickets are secure materials as well as any scratch paper, etc., and treat them as secure materials. They should be locked up at the end of every day. Also, uh, that you should be monitoring the students during the testing and ensure that they do have the accommodations and supports that they need. There is a confidentiality agreement form that you need to sign and your building assessment coordinator should have that available for you. There was also a test security manual. If you wish to review that, that's not only on the DPI site, but it is also on the MMSD forward test website. It's very important that if there is something that does happen that is considered to be a violation or you consider it to be a violation, that it gets reported. Um, let someone else make the decision about what is uh, and is not an incident. So please report all incidents to either to your building um, staff, to your building assessment coordinator, or to myself, and I will report it to the DPI. Um, there is an incident form that I will fill out or you can fill out. Uh, depending on it, we may work with the uh, DPI to go through a fact-finding uh, investigation and uh, get the results to you. Maybe nothing will happen. So please make sure that you report a violation as soon as possible. The consequences for students could be that uh, the test itself would be invalidated um, and they would not receive a score, in which case the school will have to let parents know and should let parents know before the end of testing that this is in fact the case of what happened. As far as accessibility, there is a separate um, training session for that, but first of all, the overall idea is that all students should be able to take some sort of a test uh, regarding how far they progress during the year, whether it's the Wisconsin Forward or the Dynamic Learning Maps. So you can see a diagram of the universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations. 
accommodations are requ required that students have an IEP or a 504 plan to, to use these particular tools. Designated supports uh, can be done uh, based on student need and teacher recommendation, and universal tools are open to everyone. Please keep in mind that both designated supports and accommodations, it should be uh, supports that are used on a daily basis by students rather than something that's unique and brand new to the test. There is a accessibility guide that is on the district website. You can check out more information about each one of the supports, designated supports, uh, the accommodations, and the universal tools are all within the accessibility guide. There's also a, a PowerPoint training specifically for the, uh, designated supports and accommodations if you have specific questions. Please make sure that these are all set up ahead of time. These are um, these embedded supports are the ones that are driven within the computer system. Uh, they need to be turned on ahead of time. And the non-embedded supports are those that you provide as a school building and should be available on testing day as well. You will know that the uh, supports are turned on when you look at the ticket. Uh, if they are an embedded support, it will say A for accommodation, text-to-speech for reading passages, and then some abbreviations after it, or DS for designated support. These are very different. Remember that accommodations require a, an IEP or a 504, whereas designated supports are for uh, the students in general. There are manuals and guides available on both the district and the DPI website. Students should be familiar with the tools that are available to them. Um, test preparation is not something that we should be focusing on as a test. Um, the, the environment, the tools that are available are what are important for students to be able to, to know how to use. So there are tools um, that are shown in the directions but if you also want to prepare, the online training uh, tools is, is available. There are a series of videos. They are fairly short, about three or four minutes, that can provide students with an overview of the testing process and the online tools. Here's a place where you would find them. If you go to the online tools training and you click on the yellow text at the bottom, you will end up finding um, that it comes in and shows you some videos and about approximately how long they take. These are appropriate for all students. You can also see uh, tools, specific tools that are specific to grades. For instance, fourth grade uh, students will have a, a protractor available to them in mathematics. That particular video takes one minute and 10 seconds. So students that should be able to get their hands on this at some point. If you especially, this would be especially true for third graders um, or any new students uh, who have never taken the forward exam before. Also on the online training tools, if you click on the words online training tools, you'll be uh, getting into uh, grade level practice tests by content area. One of the things that you would be able to find there are the forward exam text-dependent analysis samplers. This is also available on our grade on our website by grade levels. Um, you will find these available. Again, this is not something that is new. We've done this kind of work before, and uh, it's just in a new setting and a new name for it. So what is it? It's a passage or a couple of passages that, that consist of information or literary text. Students are then asked to respond um, so using evidence from the passage or passages. Students will be able to, uh, requires them to read the text, identifying a theme, um, analyzing the development, etc. So this is all material that we've done before and is happening in classrooms. It's a long, considered to be a long write item. So there is a 30 minute, approximately 30 minutes to take this particular um, assessment and uh, although students could take longer it's best if this particular uh, session is scheduled early in the day um, early in testing rather than leaving it to one of the later um, uh, sessions when students are a little bit um, 
tired of testing. So they can practice on the online tool uh, training. Uh, they should be able to see how the test looks. As far as preparing your room, the uh, room setup should be free from noise and interruptions, etc. Uh, typical testing uh, accommodations or way it's set up. Um, here is an example of a question that always comes up. What has to be covered on walls or bulletin boards? If you have anchor charts, they do need to be covered uh, for this particular assessment. There are room signs that say unauthorized electronic devices may not be used at any time during the testing session and testing do not disturb on the district website. Here are some additional materials that would be needed. These are uh, called non-embedded. Uh, there is a listening portion for the English language arts. All students will need to have headphones um, for that. All our devices have pointing uh, uh, devices. Um, if you have uh, a mouse, you can attach that to a Chromebook. Uh, especially younger students may find that a little bit easier rather than a touchpad. We have physical keyboards. Uh, scratch paper or graph paper is, is, should be provided at the school level. Once you've completed testing, just make sure that students remain quiet while all students are finishing. You can have them read a book, do worksheets, etc. cetera. Um, they should not be permitted to use electronics. So what will it look like when students sign in? Um, using Chromebooks, they will log in. Um, it will say uh, DRC Insight. It will not look like this. It will be in the app menu at the lower left-hand corner. And then they simply click on the test sign-in uh, portion of this, uh, this page. Okay, who can proctor the test? Uh, staff who have gone through training could include administrators, teachers, paraprofessionals. Uh, may also be student teachers. Parent volunteers are not allowed. Uh, test administrators or uh, proctor guidelines um, are given in the test administration manual. Uh, typical test day uh, structure, circulate around the room, making sure that students are progressing. If they've lost focus, help refocus them. Um, have them just remind that they should be checking uh, to ensure that they're done when uh, they've answered all the questions when they think they're done. And also, if there are test violations, security violations, that you report those immediately. Positive atmosphere is so important. We know that students feed off from what they feel that is going on with their, their teachers. So your approach to the test is very important. Do not disturb electronic devices we've talked about. There is a script inside of the test administration manual that is for you to um, follow as you go through and give the test. There are uh, say and do boxes, and you can just simply follow that uh, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, uh, for some more information about the test administration. Once they have completed and submitted the test, this is very important, they cannot go back to that particular session once they're finished with it. Now, for instance, mathematics has two sessions. Um, if they finish session one, they cannot go back to that once they've said they're done. However, if you pause in the middle of a session, you can come back and complete that at a later time. Students will need to have a separate test ticket for every content area. They will use the same test ticket for each one of the sessions. For instance, English Language Arts has four sessions. They only need one ticket for all of those four sessions. You should have the test tickets ahead of time. Uh, note that there is a single username and password for each student for each content area. Make sure that you are giving the right ticket to the right person. Uh, making sure that sounds very simple, but we every year we have someone who um, accidentally takes the wrong test. Now, if a student uh, submits the test uh, and says, but I just, I, I hit the wrong button, uh, 
if they, the test can be reopened under a certain conditions. Those conditions are if they've answered two or less, two or fewer questions, and if they have spent, um, or if the, the test has been uh, two or fewer minutes. So you need to contact me, Tim Peterson, um, in order for me to go through and evaluate whether the test should be reopened. Um, if there's a security incident, the test may be invalidated, the test will not be scored, the student is not a participation uh, participant, and we need to make sure that um, we contact the families and let them know that this is the case. Any questions during the test, here is the forward help desk uh, hotline. You can, you um, as a test administrator are certainly welcome to call that if you have a specific question. Otherwise, you can call the help desk for the technology uh, in the district, or you can call the Office of uh, Assessment Administration. Thank you so much, and uh, we will um, wish you the best of luck. Please don't hesitate to call and ask if you have any questions or email as well.